This is VOA News. Reporting by remote, I'm Joe Ramsey. An advisor to Ukraine's president has challenged Russia to conduct an urgent round of talks in Mariupol, the AP's Ed Donahue reports. Mariupol has faced a Russian siege and relentless bombardment for seven weeks, and the last remaining Ukrainian defenders are currently trapped at a giant steel mill encircled by Russians. Ukrainian Army officer Sergei Volensky says this is our appeal to the world. This could be the last appeal of our lives. We are probably facing our last days, if not hours. The enemy is outnumbering us 10 to 1. He pleaded for them to be taken to safety on the territory of a third-party state. President Volodymyr Zelensky says up to a 1,000 civilians could be trapped at that steel plant. Zelensky says there are two ways to unblock Mariupol. The first one is serious. The second way is diplomatic. Russia doesn't agree on it yet. I'm Ed Donahue. Ukraine also accused Russian forces on Wednesday of failing to observe a local ceasefire agreement long enough to allow large numbers of women, children, and elderly people to flee the besieged city of Mariupol. Ukrainian officials said on Wednesday morning they had secured Russia's agreement to open a safe corridor. They hope to use about 90 buses to evacuate just 6,000 of the 100,000 civilians believed still to be trapped there. But the regional governor says fewer buses than planned were able to reach the city and fewer people than hoped were evacuated. Ukraine's deputy prime minister said the humanitarian corridor, quote, did not work as planned today. Russia did not immediately respond to her remarks. It denies targeting civilians and has blamed Ukraine for the failure of earlier attempts to organize humanitarian corridors. Follow us on the VOA mobile app. This is VOA News. A court in Rwanda has sentenced a Chinese mining engineer to 20 years in prison after he was found guilty of tying his workers to a tree and whipping them. Kate Bartlett reports from Johannesburg. A Chinese citizen was convicted Wednesday in Rwanda on charges of torture, according to Rwandan media reports. Last year, a video circulated online showing Sun Shujan, the Chinese national, flogging two Rwandan workers who had been tied to a tree. Sujan said the two men had stolen minerals from his company, Ali Group Holdings Limited, Rwanda's KT Press reported. The Chinese embassy in Kigali condemned the unlawful acts in a statement at the time, according to local media. This is not the first time Chinese nationals working in Africa have been accused of abusing their local workers. In Zimbabwe in 2020, a Chinese coal mine owner shot and wounded two local workers after they complained about wages they were owed. Kate Bartlett, VOA News, Johannesburg. The United Nations says it's extremely concerned that Mali has prevented its investigators from visiting a town where local troops and suspected Russian fighters allegedly killed hundreds of civilians, the world body said on Wednesday. At least 300 men are believed to have been summarily executed during a late late March raid on Mora, a town of about 10,000 people infiltrated by Islamist militants according to a Human Rights Watch report. The U.S. Justice Department will appeal a judge's order voiding the federal travel mask mandate, AP correspondent Mike Gracia reports. The Justice Department is filing an appeal to overturn a judge's order that voided the federal mask mandate on planes, trains, and in travel hubs. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention asked the Justice Department to appeal the decision that was handed down Monday by a Trump-appointed federal judge in Florida. The notice of appeal was filed in federal court in Tampa, Florida. In a statement, the CDC said its continuing assessment is that at this time, an order requiring masking in the indoor transportation corridor remains necessary for public health. Airlines and airports had quickly repealed face covering requirements after the judge's order. Mike Gracia, Washington. Recapping our top story, Russian forces claim they will seize the Mariupol steel plant that is the last main stronghold of resistance in the besieged city on Thursday after Ukraine proposed talks on evacuating troops and civilians there. Mariupol would be the biggest city to be seized by Russia since invading Ukraine eight weeks ago in an attack that has taken longer than some military analysts expected, seen over five million people flee abroad and turn towns and cities to rebels. Reporting by remote, I'm Joe Ramsey, VOA News.
This is VOA News via remote. I'm Marissa Melton. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Thursday said in a virtual address to the IMF and the World Bank conference outlined far bigger costs and financing needs. He told participants in the conference and interpreted remarks that Ukraine needs $7 billion per month to make up for economic losses caused by Russia's invasion of his country. He also said later Ukraine will need hundreds of billions of dollars to rebuild. Zelensky said the global community needs to exclude Russia immediately from international financial institutions, including the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. He said all countries, in his words, must immediately be prepared to break up all relations with Russia. Earlier during the conference, World Bank President David Malpas said that physical damage to Ukraine's buildings and infrastructure from the Russian invasion has reached roughly $60 billion and will continue to rise as the war continues. U.S. President Joe Biden is announcing more military aid for Ukraine and is warning Congress he'll need additional money to help fight off the Russian invasion. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Magani has more. It's another $800 million, which the president says will help as Russia focuses its troops in eastern Ukraine. This package includes heavy artillery weapons, dozens of howitzers, and 144,000 rounds of ammunition to go with those howitzers. It also includes more tactical drones. It adds to the roughly $2.6 billion in military aid the president had earlier approved. And as the fight continues... I've almost exhausted the drawdown authority I have that Congress authorized for Ukraine. Saying he'll have... This is VOA News. Iranian state television said intelligence officers arrested three people with ties to Israel's Mossad agency who were charged with involvement in releasing classified information. The report Thursday didn't identify them or how they had access to classified information. Iran and Israel have long accused each other of spying and waging a shadow war for years. Israel views Iran as its greatest threat and has repeatedly threatened to take military action against Iran to prevent it from acquiring nuclear weapons. Iran denies it is seeking such weapons and has vowed a harsh response to any aggression. Iran doesn't re- recognize Israel and supports anti-Israeli armed groups such as Hezbollah and Hamas. The World Health Organization says it strongly recommends Pfizer's COVID-19 antiviral pill, Paxlovid, for patients with milder forms of the disease who are still at high risk of hospitalization. But the UN agency warned it was, in its words, extremely concerned that the inequality in access seen with COVID-19 vaccines would again leave low- and middle-income countries at the end of the line waiting for those COVID pills. The WHO said in the BMJ Medical Journal that Pfizer's uh, pill was the superior choice of treatment for the unvaccinated, elderly, or immunocompromised people with COVID-19. For the same patients, the WHO made a conditional recommendation, that's its term, of the antiviral drug remdesivir made by the U.S. biotech firm Gilead uh, that it had previously recommended against. The WHO recommended Paxlovid over remdesivir as well as over Merck's COVID-19 pill and monoclonal, monoclonal antibodies. British lawmakers have ordered a parliamentary investigation into Prime Minister Boris Johnson for allegedly lying about whether he broke coronavirus restrictions by attending illegal gatherings during the pandemic. The move, approved without a formal vote in the House of Commons, means Parliament's Committee of Privileges will investigate whether Johnson knowingly misled Parliament. The probe piles more pressure on a conservative prime minister whose grip on power has been shaken by claims he flouted the pandemic rules that he imposed on the country and then repeatedly failed to own up to it. Repeating our top story this hour, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has uh, made a virtual address to the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, outlining far bigger costs and financing needs than previous. Uh, your uh, Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton, VOA News.